Well, this is the ninth video of 12, looking at the structure and properties of organic molecules. And we've been sort of coming out of the depths of looking at orbitals and resonance forms and acidity and basicity, which I believe are a little harder for most folks. We're going into the last recording on conformations. And the conformations of molecules, we're not looking at um, movement of electrons like we were in resonance forms, or we should say relocation of electrons, so that we know where partial charges are. With conformations, we're just looking at a molecule and rotations about bonds to get to different conformations. So this is where we are. We'll be looking at, in this recording, Newman projections and chair chairs or these types of conformations that we call chairs for ring structures. So really we're looking at non-cyclic structures and we'll be using Newman projections to look at those. Cyclic structures that are smaller than six atom rings, five four-membered rings, five-membered rings, have an inherent angle strain to them. And then we'll be looking at just cyclohexanes to illustrate chair conformations. There can be other molecules that have chair conformations, such as cyclohexanose or sugars, but we're using cyclohexanes, just six carbons, in a ring, a six-membered ring. We'll be looking at these and how these cyclohexane structures take on chair conformations. So let's look at first non-cyclic structures. Then we'll speak very briefly about angle strain in four to five-membered rings and then look at cyclohexane. Newman projections, what we have here, is often used to look at the non-cyclic structure. So I'm just going to draw a Lewis structure of ethane where we have three hydrogens off of each carbon. And what we mean by a new what I mean by a Newman projection is we look along a carbon carbon axis. So we take our eye and we really visualize ourselves looking along a carbon carbon axis that is defined. In this case, having only two in ethane, it really doesn't matter. We don't have to define what axis we're looking along. There are only two carbons here. But we could then take this view and change then the view of this ethane molecule so that we draw it as if we're looking along the carbon-carbon axis. And then what they'll do to show three dimensions for a Newman projection, we'll imagine a, a disk that we can use to designate that we're either on the front, this carbon here, or we're on the back of the disk, this carbon here. So it's just a of course, an artificial addition to help us see three dimensions, to see a front and a back. Now, as I'm looking at this carbon here, we would actually say the proton, the hydrogen, would be straight up. So, we could almost argue with this projection we see down here, we're not looking along from the left. We're really looking from the right here, because if I do that, I can see this hydrogen would be to my top left, this would be to the top right, and this hydrogen would be straight down to my eye. Again, I guess we can draw a nose here and lips. He's always smiling. He's in organic chemistry. So we can say we really see, I guess, this molecule that I've drawn better represented if we look along this axis here. Now, I could have certainly rotated, and we're going to talk about that, rotated this methyl group about this axis so that we can have the hydrogen here at the very bottom straight and in the plane just like this one here. So it's just very important to start looking at your alkanes if you want to draw Newman projections sort of from the side. They're typically drawn with the carbons in the plane. We're drawing them as coming out of the plane. So now what do I do if I want to stop, talk about conformations? Well, using the Newman projection, we can sort of, in a sense, grab hold of this first methyl group, this carbon, in a sense, just turn it and see different conformations for ethane. So in this case, I'm turning at 60 degrees, rotating about the carbon-carbon bond, and that hydrogen, 
that was on the right is now vertical. And this one that was, I guess, on the top left is now on the bottom left. And this one, of course, has moved over. So everybody has shifted, if we turn that first methyl group, holding the back methyl group fast, we can have what's called a eclipsed conformation. This is called staggered. If we keep these in 60 degree orientations, the vicinal hydrogens, that means off of adjoining carbons, these are at 60 degree orientation. And then by rotating it, I can have those overlapping. This eclipsed conformation gives us a certain strain, our first strain that we're talking about in this recording. This strain is torsional strain. This is a specific type of strain, not due to what is at the positions here in the bonding, but due to the bonding itself. Any substituent on adjacent carbons or vicinal carbons have eclipsing bonds. And bonds are electrons, and electrons have repulsions with each other. We give that a value of 4 kilojoules per mole. So since we have three of those interactions, we would say we have a total of 12 kilojoules per mole of torsional strain. And of course, we uh, relieve this strain if we were to continue to rotate so that this goes from being here, we could put it in the gap. We can continue the rotation. So there are three eclipsed orientations and three staggered conformations we could consider for any ethane molecule. Now let's just talk a little bit about how much of a barrier it, there is for rotation. This 12 kilojoules per mole is the activation energy for rotation of ethane. But even with that, at room temperature, we are able to surmount that energy and have much rotation rapidly occurring at room temperature. But at any given time, more than 99% of the molecules of ethane that you might have in your bag that you look at 99% of the time, they're going to be in this conformation so fast as they move through the high energy conformation. Let's look at butane. Butane adds a little bit more complexity since if we were to start with a zigzag drawing of butane, now I'm going to shift to skeletal. The skeletal representation that you often see for alkanes where it's in a zigzag conformation we could say, hey, I can consider a Newman projection of this butane siding along the C2C3 axis. So what's the C2C3? Well, it's just basically counting from one side or the other, the 2 and 3 carbon. So if we want, we could say, hey, how do I draw a Newman projection siding along the C2C3? You could circle that put an arrow along it and say my eye, there's my eye, is going to look down the C2, C3 axis. So we just sort of imagine ourselves looking at this from the side. So where would this methyl group be relative to my eye? It would be straight up. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that using Newman projections. And again, the disk was artificial. We're just having to do that because we know we do that with Newman projections. We draw that disc in. So that methyl group would be straight up. And there would be two hydrogens that are not drawn in. One to the bottom left and one to the bottom right. So I'm going to put those in. And as we go to the behind the disc, this artificial, I guess, addition to show three dimensions for Newmans. This is going to Newman from skeletal, going from skeletal to Newman, we're trying to do that. The methyl group behind the disc would be straight down. And again, siding along the C2-C3 axis, we'd say at this carbon here, there's a hydrogen, two of them in fact. One's coming out towards us, one's going into the plane of the paper, but as I'm looking at it from this side, it would be top left and top right. Top left, that was the one on the wedge, and top right. That's the one on the dash that sits here. Okay, so there we go. We're done. We went from butane to a Newman projection of butane, wherein we, I guess, took the zigzag conformation. We also call the zigzag conformation an anti conformation. This would be the favored conformation. 
Why is it favored? Because we basically are taking the two biggest groups off those vicinal carbons or adjoining carbons and putting them at opposite sides. Now if you have something more complex as a structure, you tend to favor those, I guess, staggered arrangements, which this is. It's just a special type of staggered because we have the two groups opposite to each other. This is a special type of staggered, lowest energy. You're going to find those by taking the two biggest groups and making sure they're at farthest distances from each other. Usually alkyl groups are going to have the most strain, so we tend to separate alkyl groups as much as possible. Now if we were to take and um, rotate any one of these two groups, this first carbon in front of, the, front of this or the one behind, we could take the anti-conformation the stagger that's special to another stagger that's not as low in energy. It's called the Gauche conformation or has Gauche interactions of alkyl groups or anything other than hydrogens. These both have to be something other than hydrogens to have what we call Gauche interactions. They both have to be something other than hydrogens. We have those two in 60 degree angles from each other. We have some sort of Gauche interaction. For methyl groups here we have 3.3 kilojoules per mole. Um, but you can certainly have more interaction or Gauche interaction if these were larger alkyl groups. Last, the highest energy. This, so this would be lowest energy. Staggered conformation. We call it an anti-conformation because we have some, two things other than hydrogens that are on opposite sides. Two groups other than hydrogens on opposite sides. This was a Gauss conformation. This is in the middle. This would have been highest energy because we have the groups in an eclipsing orientation where we still have the eclipsing or torsional strain that's just due to eclipsing bonds but now we have van der Waals strain where the groups themselves are large and are starting to interact. So that's an additional strain. So we've had torsional strain and now we have what's called van der Waals strain. Strain that emerges when two atoms on the ends of those bonds are closer than the sum of their van der Waals radii. They're basically trying to take the same space. That's a specific type of steric strain. Well, we're quickly getting into the second and third part of this recording, and that is just strain due to small rings. We, we looked at torsional strain through Newman projections and van der Waals strain with Newman projections of non-cyclic structures, but what about cyclic structures? Well, if we have cyclopropane, cyclobutane, and cyclopentane. Now these drawings may not be very clear, but we have a side view. We're looking at this from the side, and we have with cyclopropane an inherent inherent sorry torsional strain. You can't buckle a cyclopropane ring. So not only do you have torsional though, you also have angle. These angles by this ring want to be 60 degrees, but by hybridization, these are sp3 carbons. They want to be 90 to 90. I'm oh, sorry, 109. Point. Five degrees. So there's a difference. By ring, it wants to be 60 degrees to make the ring. But by hybridization, it wants to be 109.5. So there's some strain there. Some significant angle strain. Strain due to expansion or compression of bond angles. Bonds that typically want to be 109.5 are strained to be near 60 degrees. Cyclobutane can buckle a little bit which is interesting because when it buckles, it actually adds angle strain. But there's a trade-off. By folding or buckling, the angle strain increases, goes up, but the torsional strain decreases. So you get a kickback. So we may put this arrow a little bit bigger and say by increasing slightly angle strain, we re relieve a lot of that torsional strain. Again, you can kind of see that this CH bond now is not overlapping with any of these two CH bonds here because we buckled that one or, or folded that one out of the plane. Here, these, if you look along an axis in cyclopropane, these would be in the same plane and that would give us torsional strain. Cyclopentane will do the same thing as butane, it'll buckle so that we can reduce torsional but we increase the angle strain a little bit. We're going to do the same thing with cyclohexane we have our three strains. Angle strain is actually increased here 
with cyclobutane and cyclopentane. But with, cy with cyclohexane, an interesting thing happens. These angles, if we press it flat, if we were to press cyclo cyclohexane flat, these angles would want to be 120. And remember what we just said is that we'll sometimes buckle the ring to reduce torsional strain. But here is the best of both worlds. We reduce torsional strain by buckling, but in the same way we reduce angle strain. You say, well, why? Because we're a little bit expanded out from 109.5. So if we buckle, those angles come back to near 109.5. So cyclohexane is very unique in that by buckling, we reduce torsional strain and angle strain. So this one's very well strongly driven to buckle. There's a much energy that's relieved. So how does it buckle? Well, we're showing that here from a side view. So our eye is sort of looking at from a side. And what has happened is this is pushed down, this is buckled down, and this is pushed up. So we're kind of looking at that from here. Now I know we have the eyes over here, but we're going to sh change our view by looking through these eyes to what we see on the right. So what we, did, we do, again, with the cyclohexane, if it's flat, we buckle, push one end down, and pull one end up. That gets us what's called a chair conformation, and there are always two chairs for any cyclohexane structure. It's interesting, we can take this view of the chair, it's called the chair because you can imagine a guy um, sitting on the, <laughs> that is not a very good drawing sitting on this reclining, uh, just like a lawn chair with a soda and maybe a, I don't know, a book. He's trying to get ready for his O-Kim. He's got a book and he's reclining. So that's why they call it the chair confirmation. Anyway, we could really still see a Newman projection or take this and push it into a Newman projection. How? Having our eyes looking down two carbon-carbon bonds. So looking down these two carbon-carbon bonds, we can see a Newman projection. A Newman projection, sorry, Newman projection. And we see that we have a staggered arrangement of the hydrogens and these methylene groups. Now it's an interesting thing. You see these are in a gauche orientation these two methylene groups, but you don't have a Gauche interaction. I'll leave that out there as to maybe why that would not be as prevalent, the Gauche interaction you would expect to see, because these are indeed only 60 degrees apart. Now, of course, if it's anything other than, it has to be two groups that are other something other than hydrogen, and they are CH2, CH2. This one's on the front, and this one's on the back. So it's, again, we're seeing three dimensions through these discs. We're looking from front to back. Front, in front of the disc, to back. But it's interesting, these, though they have Gaussian orientation, very little, very little, I guess, interaction. That's interesting. Interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. We have the chair. There are always two chairs, and we have to consider those two chairs. How do we get from one chair to the other? Ring flip. So I'm going to draw one chair and I usually just, and most of this is not I, books will make this a little bit emboldened to show that it's sort of st sticking out towards you. And this is again one I guess side of the ring and this is the other side of the ring. And in order to do a ring flip, we're not flipping it over, we're going to push this down and push this up. So that's called a ring flip. And in ring flips, as you're going to hear on the next slide, A's go to E's and E's go to A's. I'm going to explain what that means on the next slide, but it's axial to equatorial, equatorial to axial. I just want to get you ready for that. Ring flip, we're going to take A's to E's and E's to A's. So let's push this end up, still having these two carbons out front, and push this end down. You just did a ring flip. <laughs> or you saw one. Okay. And what happens? A's, that is axial protons, protons that are straight up and straight down, go to what we call near equatorial, meaning straight out from the ring. So axials go to equatorials with ring flips. 
So I apologize. This we have our axle shown, and for the same ring, we have the equatorial shown. But we're still going to see that. I apologize. This is not a change from these red to blue. They are different protons. But watch out down here when we finish this slide. We're going to see that red can go to blue. So let's just uh, kind of catch how we do that. Axials, you know where your axials are when you go from carbon to carbon in the ring. If you're going up to a certain carbon, the axial is straight up. If you go up and up to get there, then the axial at that position is straight up. So in the same manner, if we go down and down, can you guess? Then the axial is straight down. Now, equatorials are always at an angle not straight 180 degrees from the axial, but a little bit towards the other side of the ring. So here, this hydrogen that sits here, at the equatorial position is slightly down. And in the same way, this one is slightly up. And we can do that all the way around the ring. We then can know where our, what we call, axial protons are, because they're straight up and straight down. Again, we go down and down to get to the axial down. We go up and up to get to the axial up. And where the equatorials sit in, I guess, ref in, I guess, consideration of the axials, you can know the equatorial. If it's axial up, equatorial is slightly down. The bonds shown above are set in place. You have to know these are where the hydrogens are for this particular chair. So I'm just going to take that chair and only show one of the axial hydrogens off of this carbon to show what happens in a ring flip. So we can, I guess, consider for any chair with a cyclohexane ring as part of that structure, it, the structure that we want to draw a chair for just has to have a cyclohexane ring. There can be other groups off of it. What we drew, do is to start drawing a chair is typically you draw the parallel lines and then cap both ends going in opposite directions. So I went down and down, this goes up and up. The axial groups, again, are in the direction that you take to get to the carbon. So if I go up and up, the axial is straight up. Here it go down and down, so the axial would be straight down. And here would be up and up are the axials, down and down are the axials. But let's go ahead and just consider what happens in a ring flip. If we take the hydrogen here at the axial position, and we consider the ring flip, again, just taking this end and pushing it up, and this end and pushing it down, A's go to E's, and E's go to A's. So this red goes blue, because when we bend it down, he kind of follows that bend, and now is not straight out, but he's slightly bent up. And what was in blue here, if I can just draw one more, would now be in red, because I'm going down and down, the axial now would be in this this position, the axial group would be down. So that happens when we have ring flips. All A's go to E's and E's go to A's. Now we're almost done. I want to make sure this is short. There are different types of groups that you can have at the axial positions. Here we have a methyl group. There's a special type of interaction it has with the ring itself. It's called a 1-3 diaxial interaction. Anytime you have at least one group off the cyclohexane ring, you're going to have some sort of axial interaction and you try to avoid it. You try to have the least amount of axials for any cyclohexane ring. Well here we have just a methyl cyclohexane and it favors in a great way the chair here with the methyl at the equatorial. Why? Because the amount of 1,3 diaxial interactions is about 7 kilojoules per mole or 7.6 kilojoules per mole. Ethyls groups 7.9 and then it kind of drops off pretty good. When we go to OH, BR, CL, and F, in general, the higher steric interference is tied to alkyl groups more so than to halogens or hydroxyl groups. Let's finish and consider um, a problem where we now take and try to minimize this strain. So again, this strain is a, just a 1,3 diaxial interaction. It's like a gauche. The gauche has these two groups at 60 degree angles. This axial group to the ring, we still can sort of, looking at the methyl group here on a Newman projection of methyl cyclohexane, this axial group is having some interaction with the methylene group in the ring. So it's more of a group to ring. The group off the ring to the ring is the source for this 1,3 diaxial interaction. It's just a special type of gauche interaction.
this slide this slide just helps us to see that that we're not moving into some very different interaction it's just a special type of Gauss interaction so for clarity I've only shown the Gauss interaction here but we could certainly say this methyl group has the same interaction with the methylene group here all right so let's summarize in general with any cyclohexanes or substituted cyclohexanes mono di tri substitutions off the ring methyl cyclohexane one two dimethyl cyclohexane we have to consider the two chairs how do we draw those again drawing the parallel lines maybe putting this one in a little bit in bold to know that, that to, to express that it's out front we try to minimize one three diaxial interactions how uh, minimize axials that's the key try to minimize axials try to put as many groups at the equatorial as possible now it's going to consider this not usually the dominant consideration but you can try to also minimize Gaussian interactions of groups to each other groups to group so let's just review the steps draw two chairs we have to do that with any cyclohexane structure put the first group on um, that seems pretty straightforward but just put it on somewhere and then put everything put the other groups on the right places in relationship to this first group use rule a to e that is axial to equatorial and e to a when you go through the ring flip to draw the second chair let's just give an example of that and be done so let's take cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane cis means same side same side of the ring rings locking things in so we could draw just a flat cyclohexane ring so we know that's not the favored conformation but it's still fitting the name cis same side of the ring 1 2 or adjoining carbons 1 2 carbons dimethyl cyclohexane so we can just show it with the conformation constitution sorry and stereochemistry clearly shown now let's draw one chair and it really doesn't matter how you start here you can put one group on in relationship to the, the ring and then the other group has to go on in, the, in relationship to the first group at the right position so I'm going to pick this I'm going to put an asterisk by this carbon that's going to be where I start and I'm going to have this since it's kind of coming up towards my eye I'm going to have this on the axial position now I'm looking at it again from the top here looking at it from the top here my so I'm going to have this group on my right on my right side and coming up well I can't go straight up there's no axial there the best I can do because the axial is straight down is have this on the equatorial that's the best I can do this carbon I cannot draw the methyl group coming straight up there's no axial there the axial is straight down the best I can do is slightly up at an equatorial position that's our first chair now I guess I accidentally filled this spot in so let's just maybe draw this with a little more clarity so I have the methyl group up that came on the best I can do is have that on the equatorial and then I can do the ring flip push this down push this I sorry push this up push this down and again your rings don't have to look perfect they just have to have this sort of Shazam lightning bolt shape I push this end up push this end down A's go to E's so this is going to go to the equatorial position and E's go to A's this is still out in front this methyl group now is at an axial position all right that's it these are the two chairs what would be the I guess energy of these two they'd be the same because I have one axial group over here and I have that same energy over here I have one axial group over here so one axial one axial they're the same in energy this group went from axial to equatorial but when I flipped this equatorial went to axial so these have the same energy that's it that's how we draw chair conformations for cyclohexane structures how we consider Newman projections for non-cyclic structures so we were com comparing the Newman to 
the chair conformation for cyclohexane. And just considering also that ring strain that we can have in smaller rings. So we've considered three things here. We've considered our Newman projections, angle strain in smaller rings than cyclohexane, and then the cyclohexane chairs. Bye-bye.